talk about it. Check one, two, three. So the Jesus Loves You Tour, it's a wrap. Uh, we had a crazy experience on this uh, book tour. I don't know if we sold any books, but uh, we've been to some great places, met a lot of neat people. And uh, hey, if you weren't familiar with what we've done, I mean, we went to a gay pride event, Westboro Baptist Church in Topeka. We debated Ron Jeremy over at uh, University of Southern California, um, gave away buffets, gave away a house in Detroit. So just a, a neat time. You can get more information at JesusLovesYou.net. Uh, but we got some few things that we still want to show you on this podcast, like uh, the experience at Westboro continued to San Diego. We caught wind um, that the Westboro team was going to be out at the Rock Church in San Diego and 40 other protests throughout California. So uh, Steve and some people from our team headed out there. Um, I think there's a little chemistry with Steve and Shirley's daughter, Melanie. Uh, Melanie, sorry Megan, it's Megan. Well, that's a whole nother story. So watch this footage of us invading their protests uh, for another kind of round two, so to speak, in San Diego. Hey, welcome, Horizon Christian Fellowship, San Diego, California. Uh, here, waiting for Shirley. Haven't seen her yet. Uh, looking for the Westboro crew, but it's early. I don't know why they're picking her at 8.30. There's like seven cars in the parking lot, but here we are. Welcome to San Diego. Welcome to our second installment. Is that them? The Westboro Baptist Church. The cops are over there. Here we go. Be honest. San Diego to Atlanta. Uh, that was actually the last stop on the tour was at the Gay Pride event in Atlanta. We set up a booth that simply um, just said no matter what you've done or who you are, Jesus loves you. Um, we handed out bracelets that say, said um, I'm sorry. And we got to talk to, to thousands of, of people that were wondering what we're doing there. And what we wanted to do was simply have a different conversation. Um, we said we want to talk about your spirituality, not your sexuality. And, um, and so we did that and we kind of stayed out of the arguing. But then when the actual parade happened, I've never seen something like this. Um, well, maybe because I've never been to a parade um, you know, like on this level. I'm um, just so many people lined through the, the streets um, in excitement for what was going to happen. And um, we just stood there and we, we gave out maybe a thousand water bottles with, with 50 people. Um, that, that came out to support this. So there's some great footage. Also, I, I would say the protesters were not as friendly as Shirley and Megan from Westboro. One guy stepped on my toe. He was, you know, yelling at me. And so watch this kind of crazy footage from the Gay Pride event. Hey, it's Jason Harper here in Atlanta, getting ready for the Gay Pride Festival. We have water bottles that say Jesus loves you. This I know. We have a couple bracelets to go along with them. We have a pink bracelet that basically says, it's true, he does. And then we have a white bracelet that says, we're sorry. And that's really what we and a great team of volunteers want to say is, we're sorry. We're sorry how people have treated you. It's not like Jesus. So it's going to be a great time. So coming at you live from the ATL. Welcome. Uh, sorry about parking. We just, uh, this isn't our house either. So we didn't uh, realize the parking <laughs> issue. But uh, thanks for, for making it out here. Um, my name is Craig Gross, Jason Arbor. Um, as Craig said, thank you very much for being here. We're honored that you would uh, take part of your weekend to be with us. Um, we are absolutely living with the expectation that uh, lives are going to be transformed this weekend. Uh, we just believe that. And, um, we've had the privilege over the last two months of traveling around the country uh, communicating this message that Jesus' love really does transcend uh, the barriers of culture, the barriers of economic and social status, and so for us to be able to, um, to be here in Atlanta and to be able to love those that feel unloved and feel far from God and to be able to love those that may not look or think or act or believe like you believe, it's all the more reason to, um, to love them. Jesus loves you this I know and then they have a bracelet that says it's true he does so you can imagine what it plays out when they, when they put the pink bracelet on there drinking the water bottle and they have kind of a, a double whammy of truth. It's really cool. It works. 
And I hope that that would resonate with them for the rest of the day, if not the week, month, or year. It's just our goal to love them right where they are. So we need to see that God can do more than we could ever ask or imagine. And so that idea of, hey, we love these people, show them, and, and, and if they had a relationship with Christ, you know, to me, that you know, like God and, and, you know, kind of take hold of their lives and see what happens. So are we going to be able to answer all those things in, in a weekend or a few hours at a parade? No. Uh, but what we can do, like Jason said, is just simply uh, to just show God's love and, and uh, God, may we not... Uh, forget just why we're there and just uh, what it is that you've done in our lives to, to get us out to this uh, point where we're People so far showed up. We're sending everybody out the parade. That's what we're doing, Steve. It's time to take that sweatshirt off. It's getting a little hot here in Atlanta. To die in your own sin, Jesus can set you free. Why would Jesus the parade's just to about to start. Sure enough, we got a megaphone boy. Hey, the Jesus Loves You tour is over, but hopefully uh, the message continues on. Uh, JesusLovesYou.net has all, all the, the stories that keep coming in. Uh, you can buy the book on, on iTunes now. Uh, you can buy the book at bookstores at Amazon. Uh, you know where to get it. Um, but here's another thing that we've done for churches. Um, we, we want churches to, to kind of preach through the things that, that we've talked about in this book. That Jesus loves the outcasts. That Jesus loves the skeptics. That, that Jesus loves the forgotten. Um, and so it's exciting. On, on the website, there's information for churches to download uh, the videos, the material, and really just go over this stuff with their congregation. Jason and I have been invited to, to a number of different churches to speak. Uh, we're going to show you some shots from, um, and video from us speaking over at Capital Christian Center, uh, who's just finished a four-week series with the Jesus Loves You Project. Because that's what Jesus does. He loves those that feel ostracized, voiceless, and marginalized. Love works. Love also waits. Our mission is to stay in proximity to people who are far from God. I want to be around them, not with some tall order agenda that I want to put a notch on my belt. No, I just want to be around people who are far from God. Those that are far from God, I want to be in their proximity because hopefully they could look at our belief, they could look at the scripture that you and I hopefully have given our lives to and find value in it. And see, oftentimes, I don't know about you, but I get frustrated at times in the years past because I feel and I think that things need to move along at a, better, at a better pace, but Jesus really illustrated patience. Loving people with patience is, is really understanding that we're talking about people. It's not some deal that needs to be brokered. People are more than a deal that needs to be closed. It says this in Luke 6. It says, here's the simple rule of thumb for behavior ask yourself what you want people to do for you and then grab the initiative and do it for them if you only love the lovable do you expect a pat on the back run-of-the-mill sinners do that if you only help those who help you do you expect a medal garden variety sinners do that if you only give for what you hope to get out of it do you think that's charity the stingiest of pawnbrokers does that I tell you love your enemies love help and give without expecting a return You'll never, I promise, regret it. So, so those things don't just come natural. Give without expecting something in return. Help those without expecting a pat on the back. Do you think when you, you know, today we live in a world where charity is all about, well, do I get the red t-shirt, you know, if I buy the red iPod, if I do this, you know, we're expecting, you know, something cool in return for our charity. Well, Jesus, that's not charity. What, what about just doing these things without expecting anything for it. And those things are difficult. So I think as we get to know the Lord better, as we take on His heart for people and His compassion for people, as we spend more time in His Word, praying, understanding who God is, those people that bother you, those people that aren't like you, they might become easier to, to love those people.